All right, for my people, I don't have that long, so I'm gonna hit it right now. Uh, for my people who don't like to know their culture, but like to tell people, uh, don't read these books. It's, uh, it's all extra books. It's Hellenistic and all that stuff. For my people who try to have excuses on why not to do the research, why not to learn about your heritage, let's walk down Josephus. Let's walk down some of the information in Josephus. We're just gonna have a quick walk with him. And I wanna start, I can start pretty much anywhere. Uh, just to show some of the information that, that he gives. Let's see here. Uh, I got some things here about Daniel 12 and 1 and Revelation 6, 5 and 6. So uh, let's just start reading. We're just going to walk down a little bit of Josephus. Josephus, War of the Jews, Book 5, Chapter 10, Section 2. We're just going to walk down it and see what it says about some of the things that, that occurred. But as for the richer sort, it, uh, it proved all one to them whether they sit, stayed in the city or attempted to get out of it. For they were equally destroyed in both cases. For every such person was put to death under this uh, pretense that they were going to desert, but in reality that the robbers might get what they had. The madness of the seditious did also increase together with their famine, and both those miseries were every day inflamed more and more. For there was no corn which which anywhere appeared publicly, but the robbers came running into and searched men's private houses. Then if they found any, they tormented them, but because they had denied they had any. And if they found none, they tormented them worse because they supposed they had more carefully concealed it. The indication that they made use of whether they had any or not was taken from the bodies of these miserable wretches, which if they were in good case, they supposed they were in no want at all of food. But if they were wasted away, they walked off without searching any further, nor did they think it proper to kill such as these because they saw they would very soon die of themselves for want of food. Many there were indeed who sold what they had for one measure. It was of beet, but of wheat, sorry, if they were of the richer sort, but barley if they were the poor. When these had done so, had so done, they shut themselves in the innermost rooms of their houses and ate the corn they had gotten. Some did it without grinding it by reason of the extremity of the want they were in, and others baked, baked bread of it according as necessity and fear dictated to them. So now, this is around the time 66 AD through 70 AD, around the destruction of the temple. So, out of the seditious things that I just read, let's, let's give you the scripture behind it. This is where our people lack. They lack understanding, they don't have too much of the historical documentation to back what they're saying, so they're just saying words, trying to make everything be about our times, and it's very ignorant. So now let's just try to set some things straight. So Matthew 24 and 3. And as he set upon the Mount of Olives, sorry, 24 and 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there be there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So that's dealing with the events that led, led up to the destruction of the temple. This is dealing with the events that led up to the destruction of the temple. So let's see what one of the signs were that led up to the events. Let's see, Matthew 24 and seven. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So now, what are we reading? 
we're reading about the big famine that was in Jerusalem during the siege. This is the famine that was inside of Jerusalem. Just like the Most High said. Now, I mean, just like Christ said. But this is the difference right here. The Bible gives you the overview. History gives you the details. The Bible overview, history, details. So now, we have them saying uh, one measure of wheat for the richer and uh, barley for the poor. Once again, what, what, do, what do I say? Revelation is all about 70 AD. Matthew 24 is all about 70 AD. So once you go to Revelation 6, and once again, Josephus was not a Christian. He was a Torah follower. So Josephus did not listen to, or he was not backing the Christians up. So this is show you that he was not biased in this situation. He was just telling you exactly what he saw. So now you go to Revelation 6 and 6. It literally, well, I'm going to read it 5 and 6. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou not hurt the oil and wine. So we see them giving out the, the barley right here because of the famine. You see the scale right there? That's, that's famine. That represents famine. That's the same famine found in Matthew 24. We're reading that same barley and wheat right here. So this is, shows you how prophetic Christ's words were that he was able to actually pull exact conversations and let John the Revelator hear them. And John the Revelator took those exact conversations and put them inside the book of Revelation. So now, there's one. This is Matthew 24 and Revelation, all dealing with 70 AD. But we can keep reading. Let's keep reading. Section 3. It was now a miserable case and a sight that would justly bring tears into our eyes. How men stood as to their food while the more powerful had more than enough and the weaker were lamenting for want of it. But the famine was too hard for all other passions. See, this is the famine. What did Christ say? There will be famine at the time of the end that deal with the destruction of the temple. This is famine at the time of the end dealing with the destruction of the temple. It was too hard for other passions and it was, and it, and it is destructive to nothing so much as to modesty for what was otherwise worthy of reverence was in this case despised in so much that children pull the very morsels that their fathers were eating out of their very mouths and what was still more to be pitied so did the mothers do as to their infants and when those that were most dear were perishing under their under their hands they were not ashamed to take from them the very last drop that might preserve their lives and while they ate after this manner yet were they not concealed in so doing but the seditious everywhere came upon them immediately see the sedition was everywhere it wasn't just in one part of Jerusalem it was everywhere it was throughout Judea and snatched away from them what they had gotten from others for when they saw any house shut up this was them to this was to them a signal that the people within had gotten some food Whereupon they broke the open they broke open the doors and ran in and took pieces of what they were eating almost up out of their very throats. And this by force, the old men who held their food fast were beating. And if women hid what they had within their hands, their hair was torn for so doing. Nor was there any 
commiseration shown either to the aged or to the infants, but they lifted up children from the ground as they hung upon the morsels they had gotten and shook them down upon the floor. But still, they were more barbarously cruel to those that had prevented their coming in and had actually swaddled that swallowed down what they were going to seize upon as if had been unjustly defrauded of their right. They also invented terrible methods of torment. This is Israelites doing this to Israelites. This is what's going on inside of the temple, inside of Jerusalem. This is before Rome came in and finished destroying them. So they also invented terrible methods of torment to discover where any food was and there were these to stop the passages of their wrenches, sorry, the passages of the privy parts of the miserable wretches and to drive sharp stakes up their fundamentals. And the man was forced to bear what is, is, sorry, what it is terrible even to hear in order to make him confess that he had but one loaf of bread or that he might discover a handful of barley meal that was concealed. So they was taking stakes and shoving them up every hole on a person's body that they have, they was putting stakes up them holes. And and this was done when when these tormentors were not themselves hungry for the thing had been less barbarous had necessity forced them to it but this was done to keep their madness in exercise as making preparations of pro of provisions for themselves for the following days so now what are we reading right now in josephus matthew 24 matthew 24 and we well, all think this is about the time of the end. No. Matthew 24 and I think it's what? 21. 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. So you have Christ in 30-something A.D. prophesying about events that was going to take place from 66 through 70 A.D. So he's letting them know the tribulation is terrible. And unless those days were shortened, all the elect would have been destroyed. So now, why... Why would they have been destroyed? Because you literally see what Israel was doing on the inside of Jerusalem while Rome had them uh, surrounded on the outside. Let's see if I can find any more. Uh, I mean, they, they're everywhere. I'm going to find one more, then I got to go. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see, uh, I'm pretty, let's see, but Emmanuel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, uh, sorry, y'all, I'm just trying to find just something. Uh, one more thing. Accomplish, built it, we have there, and see, uh, to say, I want to find the daily sacrifice when they stopped it. That will be a that will be a good one. That will be a good one to find the daily sacrifice and find out who stopped the daily sacrifice. Let's see if we can find it real fast. Uh, well, that's what well, that's the Romans putting their insides inside of the temple. Uh. Might not be able to find uh, the daily sacrifice right now, but it was the Jews themselves who stopped the daily sacrifice, uh, not the Romans. But let's uh, let's see here. I right, we'll just start with War of the Jews, Book Five. Um,
I don't know why I got Revelation 16, 9 right there. We just can go it right. Let's just read it right here. And then I can roll. Re uh, War of the Jews, book 5, uh, chapter 1, section 4. I'm just going to start reading this right here. Verse 16. For those darts that destroyed, that were thrown by the engines came with that force that they went over all the buildings and reached as far as the, as far as the altar, the temple itself, and fell upon the priests and those that were about the sacred offices, insomuch that many persons who came thither with great zeal from the ends of the earth to offer sacrifices at the celebrated place which was esteemed holy so by all mankind fell down before their own sacrifices their, themselves and sprinkled the altar the altar which was 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 vulnerable vulnerable among all men both Greeks and barbarians with their own blood till the dead bodies of strangers were mingled together with those of their own country and those of profane persons with those of the priest and the blood of all sorts of dead carcasses stood in lakes ere the holy courts themselves and now almost rich city that miserable that was sorry what miserably what misery so great as this this Thou suffers from the Romans when they came to purify thee from the intestine hatred. For thou couldst be no longer a place fit for God, nor couldst, couldst thou longer continue in being after thou hast been a sepulcher for the bodies of thine own people, and hast made the holy house itself a burying place in this civil war of thine. Yet mayest thou again grow better, if perchance thou wilt hereafter appear the anger of the of that God who is the author of thy destruction. But I must restrain myself from this passion by the rules of history, since this is not a proper time for domestic lamentations, but for historical narrations. I therefore return to the operations that followed in this edition. And I'm gonna stop right here. And now there were three treacherous factions in the city. The one parted from the other. Eleazar and his party, they kept the sacred first fruits, came against John in their cups. Those that were with John plundered the populace and went and went out the zeal and went out with zeal against Simon. Then Simon has had his supply of provisions from the city in opposition to the seditious. When therefore John was assaulted on both sides, he made the darts. Okay, so now you see pretty much that Jerusalem fell into three different factions. So when you go to Revelation 16, Revelation 16 and 9, Revelation 16 and 9. It says, hold on. Sorry, 16, 19. 16, 19. And I can start at 18. Well, my will start at 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there were and there were a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty and earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So you have uh, a great earthquake, which is symb which is uh, apocalyptic language, coming upon Jerusalem, and it splits into three different uh, segments or sections. You have here in the War of the Jews, where Jerusalem split into three different factions. So 
you have the symbolism, you have the, oh, that's just a coincidence. Or you have, okay, Revelation is actually talking about 70 AD. And whenever you have a chance, I advise everybody to go over the book of Josephus, um, War of the Jews, book 6, chapter 5, section 3. Because it has so much good stuff that happened in it. And it actually shows you how this is actually, you see the same pretty much language in Revelation as well as Matthew 24. But for instance, we can see right here, uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it real fast. I'm just going to try to give you one example from what we just read. Uh, right here. Moreover, the eastern gate of the inner court temple, which was of brass and vastly, vastly heavy, and had been with difficulty shut by 20 men and rested upon the basis of armed with iron and had bolts fastened very deep in the firm floor. In other words, it's hard to open. Which was there made of one entire stone, was seen to be opened on its own accord about the sixth hour of the night. Now those that kept watch in the temple came here, hereupon run into the captain of the temple and we see that those captains and those, we'll go there in just a second. Hereupon run into the captain of the temple and told him of it, who then came up thither, and not without a great difficulty was able to shut the gate again. This also appeared to be vulgar and a very happy prodigy, as if God did thereby open them the gate of happiness. But the men learning understood. That, but the men of learning understood it that the security of their holy house was dissolved of its own accord and that the gates were opened for the advantage of their enemies. That's not the one that I was wanting. I thought that was the one when he said uh, they heard from the temple uh, come out. Oh, here it go right here. Sorry. 299. Moreover, that the feast which, is called, which was called Pentecost as the priest was going by night in the inner court of the temple as their custom was to perform their sacred ministration they said that in the first place they felt a quaking so we have an earthquake right they felt a quaking so to me this is apocalyptic language but let's see uh, how literal we can get they felt a quaking and heard a great noise and after that they heard a sound of a great multitude saying let us remove hence so, they heard something in the temple say, let us remove hence after a great quaking, just like in Revelation 16, you have a great quaking and you have, uh, was it 16, 19, you had a great quaking in 18 and the voice came out of the temple saying, it is done. So you have one saying, it is done. You have one saying, let us remove hence. They all come after a great quaking and the voice come out of the temple. One of them was the temple in heaven. The other was the temple on earth. So I'm saying you can have the parallels between Revelation, the book of Josephus, Matthew 24. Now this shows you a few. It's thousands, it's thousands of them, thousands. And as y'all can tell, this is me. I done went through the whole thing. Right now, I'm actually on the Antiqu Antiquities of the Jews, book 16 of 20. So I plan on being with it. I plan on being finished with it by Sunday. But it's a lot of things inside of here also uh, that has great information, great information that led up to the destruction of the temple. You know, it walks you through every successor, every ruler. How Israel just kept dropping the ball over and over again. 
and how it was prophesied that uh, these rulers from from Rome was going to come and do the Most High's will. And we don't have these prophecies inside of our Bibles, which means it was some other books floating around that we did not get a hold of. But I got to go. I got to roll. Love y'all. Deuces.